iconic and haunting, the Big Daddy and Little Sisters of Bioshock immediately captivated the public's imagination. Big Daddy encounters defined the Bioshock experience, creating new mechanics and techniques that had not been seen before in gaming. So Big Daddy, Little Sister, such an iconic moment or series of moments in this game. I'm, I'm fascinated about how that got layered in because we talked a lot about the setting and the tone. That is still to me, you know, a mechanic that I remember was very unique about, you know, choosing to engage the Big Daddy and being a fight that you know is going to be very aggressive and different than a you know, traditional boss fight. I know you had an idea, Ken, of sort of three different types of AIs interacting in the same world. Yeah, we were sort of like trying to, I was trying to think of like AIs you hadn't seen before. And this is still pretty early. Like like 10 years ago, a lot's changed in 10 years. So like AIs were still pretty much enemies who saw you and came after you. Zigzag, shoot. Yep, and then that was really the focus is how do you make them, you know, AI better at you, you know? Where So I started thinking about other more primal behaviors to think about. And I was watching a nature show one day, you know, these typical nature shows. And it's like the, watch the, observe the mother tiger taking care of her young, you know, one of those kind of things. And I realized that we don't even need a narrator on those shows. We understand certain behaviors just by looking at them. They're very primal, like somebody protecting their young, the predator-prey behavior. Those things were very, you don't need dialogue for that. And AIs at that point, we didn't have the ability to do a lot of sort of, you know, smart AI. Yeah. So I said, well, what if their behaviors are just very primal and we can, we can model those behaviors? So aggro rules is something we knew we can model, right? You know, how does an, how is an AI aggro on you? What are the rules for that? Could they make a uh, aggression display um, rather than just attack? And, um, and can another character appear afraid and, and hide behind the skirts of another character? And we started talking about these things and the Big Daddy became very quickly, the actual form of the Big Daddy became yeah. very quickly as sort of this protector creature. The little sister took a lot longer, ironically, even though it's a much simpler notion in a lot of ways. The initial idea came out of sort of watching a nature show and we're trying to work within our constraints of making, we didn't have, we couldn't make super complex AIs. is when we first got the system up and running. This is before the, the play test. We weren't really thinking about player facing these things. And we had this entire system set up that completely simulated what would happen. And you'd play through the vertical slice and you walk into a room and everybody's dead because the system would work perfectly. And right. you weren't, the you weren't there to see the fight, yeah. And, and we track all the, well, they weren't called Little Sisters at the time, but then we track how much they were harvesting. And it was all like a command and conquer level simulation. Yeah. And, yeah. and players didn't care or notice yep. and yeah. so we just abandon all that stuff yeah so that that took us a step towards you know how do we present this to the player then how do we make the the gatherers which were we called them at the time before the little sister design came on like how do we make them empathetic towards the player how do we make the player want to engage with that because at the time they were just slugs right so which is a That's horrible right, design sisters originally were slugs right yeah Not actually which is a horrible design in so many ways because you don't care about slugs right. and they're also on the ground so you don't see yes, them. Yeah, right. They're not like at eye level and they're dark. So but it was, you still have yeah. something, we still have the, the trailer had like the same, or not the trailer, the demo or prototype we did. So it had the big daddy sort of like interacting with the little yeah. slug. Uh, and well, slugs crawl around the big daddy? Or no, no, it's just, yeah. it's, it's this awful That's little, little mesh. Right. It. Yeah. It's like a little beetle sort of. Uh -huh. Yeah. It, would, it was terrible. Yeah. And they were protecting, and they had, um, protecting the beetles. The beetles? What? And, no, and, and, and the it big was daddies so had two drills. It's they didn't have a hand, so they could, there's no way they could right. like... Mm, it's just yeah. fascinating to me because like the little sister, it's like there's such humanity in it, which really you really connect with. You which would, seems like, like you would think that would be the, the, the obvious thing. Yeah. 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 We're not very smart. <laughs> the, the idea of sort of choosing to engage the big daddy. I mean, when I was first time I played the game, I mean, that was always profound because you sort of sit there and like, am I ready for this? And your choice to sort of like, you know, the kind of opposite of stealth, like when you want to be discovered, was that always the mechanic with the Big Daddy? 
Yeah, that, that was, yeah. The, the idea was that they would have very particular rules about engaging with you that were entirely dependent on how you the threat level towards, not them, towards the their creature they were protecting. Yeah, that was set, and then as you work through it, I'm sure there were conversations about how difficult do we make these fights and sort of the, the balancing of that. And even, you know, with the game, you, you don't start off with a big daddy fight. It's a little ways into the game until you actually get to that. So was that, that was sure debated. You well. actually encounter the notion of big daddy and little sister many times before you actually are freed into an arena where you can actually fight them. Yeah. You see them. Sneaking you, out, yeah, pipes. Yeah. You go, you're going, you see them, you see, you see them walking down a hall, you see, well, the first time you see a little sister, she's harvesting, and then you see the big daddy come and protect her. And we realized it was, it was four or five sequences we had to do to set up, set the stage for these characters. And look, we were hoping they'd be iconic and people would respond to the way they did, because we certainly spent energy on them with the expectation that they'd have an impact that we really, just as easily could have turned out that nobody, gave, nobody I cared. I think the actual very first time, and not a lot of people see it, there's a little sister in the vent in Kashmir restaurant uh -huh. that if you're looking in the right direction at the right time, you'll see her looking at you and then she'll disappear into the eyes, vent. Yeah. It's the eyes. No, yeah. it's, a, it's the actual mesh. Is it the mesh? Because it was easier to do that right. than yeah. eyes, <laughs> but yeah. No, 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 no. Thank you. The thing as you play through the game, uh, you know, I think the moments with those sort of encounters certainly stand out to the um, to the player. For you guys, as you were developing it, was there a debate about how often to sort of have those encounters? Like, you know, like how many big daddies would there be? How would that play out? I mean, was that something that sort of changed as you? No, I think developed? we decided there would be three. I think it was three per yeah. level. So three and two in smaller levels. We did have a third big daddy that was mostly finished, but we we couldn't make it fun. Like that last 10% of an AI is always like, uh -huh. where's the fun? Like, you how do you really make it fun? I think they put it into Bioshock too, didn't they? They might have, yeah. They might have, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it was fully rigged, fully animated, but it, we just didn't have the the time we needed to really, really polish it, so right. we ended up shipping with the, the Bouncer and uh, Rosie. Hunting the Big Daddy, that demo was, I th a huge moment, I think, in the game's kind of marketing campaign. Um, and that really, I think, you know, sold the, the tension of that, that battle. When you showed that, did the entire game feel like that? Or was that really more of just like a vertical slice of what you wanted the game to feel like? That at that point was more what we wanted to feel like, because the Big Daddy was still, had a lot of problems at that point. Um, but we were confident we could do that. Like we want to make sure we were, that was an experience we could deliver on. And there weren't, it was like it functioned, but it would do really weird things. Like it had this tendency at the time to if you did the wrong thing that it would turn into basically a Super Bowl and start like a tiny little Super Bowl. Uh -huh. The big daddy would whoop, turn to a Super Bowl and start bouncing or off off the, the ceiling and walls like a million miles an hour. We didn't, uh -huh. I don't, do you remember why is it that or what I was going sure on? I'm sure some physics that we were, yeah. And, and so that actually happened sometimes we were doing the demo and Joe uh, Falstick, who was the guy running the demo with me in Barcelona, was very good at making sure that he turned away from right. the big daddy. Like, oh yeah, I guess we killed the big daddy. He must be dying <laughs> over there. But so it, there were, all things were functional, but they, were, they weren't really, they didn't have all their bells and whistles on yet. It was really good for us because it sort of gave us some confidence that people would respond to just the notion of you know, watching Little Sister and biding your time and choosing your moment. Well, it gave us confidence, but it also gave us a tool that the development team as a whole could gather around and say, we want to make it like this. Like, yes, a lot of elements in that demo were scripted, but they provided a framework for us to go back and how do we make that so it's not scripted? How do we make this robust enough so that the player can actually use these systems? Yeah. So it was something that we could point to and say, you know, all right, how are we going to do this? Like, let's break it down and let's let's figure it out. And that was like in September, and actually we were, the game was done in the game was done in February, March. So we weren't that far off. Yeah. We were a lot went into it in in, in those final months, um, but it was a big confidence boost for us because we thought it was the most important thing about the game besides the world was this sort of big daddy little sister concept and if people didn't care about it it would have been a problem for us because we spent a lot of time on it.